Hello, my name is Sheila. I am an educator at the Minneapolis Institute of Art, or MIA. MIA is a free art museum where you can see many thousands of artworks from around the world. Today, I'm excited to be your guide for a virtual tour of eight highlights of the museum's collection. A highlight is an outstanding or great part of something. For example, the best part of your day is a highlight. Your favorite part of a book could also be called a highlight. These eight artworks are some of the museum's highlights. On our tour today, we will look at the artworks together and I will tell you a little bit about them. Let's think about what makes each one a highlight. Is it the way it looks? The way it is made? How rare it is? How much someone likes it? Or something else? During our tour, I will ask you questions. You can answer the questions in your mind if you are watching by yourself, or you can discuss your answers with others if you are watching it together. Please pause the video any time if you want to look longer at an artwork or if you want more time to think about your answer to a question. Before we get started, take a minute to pause the video and grab a pencil and paper so you can draw pictures during the tour. Just press the pause button when you are ready to start looking at the highlights. This highlight of Mia's collection is an enormous sculpture of a dog by the Japanese artist Yoshitomo Nara. A sculpture is something that is not flat like a drawing on paper. Sculptures can be looked at from all around. This sculpture is made of fiberglass, a special type of plastic. Look closely at the very large dog. It is completely white except for its round red nose. The giant dog stands on its long legs and big paws. Its tail is upright. It has long floppy ears. Its eyes appear to be partially shut. How do you think the dog is feeling? What do you see that makes you say that? The artist Yoshitomo Nara called the sculpture your dog. If it was your dog, what would you call it? Your dog is six feet tall and nine feet long. That's taller than many grown-ups. Why do you think the artist might want to make a giant dog? Some grown-ups think he made it so big to remind us how the world looks through a child's eyes. Nara likes to explore memories of his own childhood and the many feelings he felt as a young person. Sometimes he was happy and carefree. At other times he felt anxious and afraid. What do you think makes your dog a highlight of Mia's collection? If you would like to take a drawing break, this would be a great time to draw your own picture of a dreamlike dog or other creature. How will you show how your creature is feeling? This highlight of Mia's collection is a portrait sculpture of a royal woman from the ancient city of Ife, located in today's Nigeria in West Africa. A portrait is a type of artwork that shows a person or people and tells something about them. Look closely at this portrait sculpture made from clay. This sculpture is about one foot tall. The woman's face is shaped like an oval. Rows of thin lines cover her forehead, eyelids, nose, cheeks, and chin. Her eyes are open and her lips are closed. Her hairstyle is made of curved shapes neatly stacked behind each other. 
Coils of clay make up her neck. Small amounts of red and black paint remain on the sparkling clay, especially on her eyes and brow. How do you think this royal woman feels? What do you see that makes you say that? Royal people in Ife often had artists create lifelike portraits of themselves and family members. Although we no longer know the name of the woman we are looking at, people at the time would have known her and how important she was because of all the details the artist included. The lines on her face, the rings of flesh on her neck, and her hairdo all show she is important. What do you think would be most important to show in a portrait sculpture of a leader today? Perhaps you are wondering about the lines that follow the natural curves of her face. These lines might be the shadows cast by a crown with a veil made from beads that hung in front of her face. What about this portrait sculpture from Ife do you think makes it a highlight? If you feel like drawing, pause the video now. Draw your ideas for a picture of someone important to you. What details will you include? To get started, draw an oval for the face and add eyes, a nose, and a mouth. This highlight of Mia's collection is an oil painting of olive trees in France. The artist Vincent van Gogh is very famous for his unique paintings and especially for his colorful pictures of nature. This type of painting is called a landscape. Vincent van Gogh's painting style is very original. No one else painted like he did when he made this over one hundred years ago. Take a close look at the painting. Rows of olive trees with green, brown, and silver leaves move our eyes from the front of the scene towards the back. Many of the bent tree trunks are outlined in black or other colors. Behind the trees are blue mountains. The sky above is bright yellow, like the round sun at the top of the picture. Blue and gold shadows cover the gold and brown earth. How do you think Vincent van Gogh was feeling when he painted this picture? What do you see that makes you say that? How do you feel as you look at it? Vincent van Gogh was obsessed with painting the olive trees. He wanted to show the roughness of the old trees. Imagine how these trees might feel if you could touch them. He also wanted his paintings to bring out the smell of the soil. Imagine the smell of the soil or dirt when you look at this. What do you imagine you can hear? He wrote to his brother Teo about his struggles to tell everything about the trees in his paintings. He wrote, it's silver, sometimes more blue, sometimes greenish, bronzed, whitening on ground that is yellow, pink, purplish, or orangish to dull red ochre. But very difficult, very difficult. But that suits me and attracts me to work fully in gold or silver. What do you think makes Vincent van Gogh's painting a highlight? If you would like to take a break to draw your own landscape, pause the video. What will you include? Trees, clouds, rocks, people? You could start by drawing a line called a horizon line that shows where the land and sky come together. 
This highlight of Mia's collection is a cover for a cradle board made by a Dakota artist about 140 years ago. She decorated leather hide from an animal with the dyed quills of a porcupine, beads, ribbons, and sequins. A cradle board is used by some Native American women to carry and protect their children. The cover makes sure the baby is safely enclosed on the cradle board. The pictures of flowers and animals help to spiritually protect the baby. Look closely at the cradle board cover. It stands about two feet high. The main body of the cover is made from leather. Along the outer edge are blue and black beads and colorful ribbons. The small ties would help hold the child in place. The designs in red, blue, purple, and yellow show flowers, dragonflies, butterflies, bison, and elk. They are all made from porcupine quills. The artist flattened the quills and dyed them different colors. This type of art is called quill work and requires a great deal of skill. The art of quill work was passed down by women to their children and others to keep the technique from being lost. How do you feel when you look at the cradle board cover? What about it makes you feel this way? Imagine how the different materials on the cradle board cover would feel if you could touch them. Imagine the texture of the smooth quills, the soft leather, the small round beads, and the cloth ribbons. What do you think makes this Dakota cradle board a highlight? This would be a great time to pause the video to draw the animals or other things in nature that you find beautiful and which make you feel protected. This highlight of Mia's collection is a car. It is a car called the Tatra. This is one of only a few cars in art museum collections. In case you were wondering about the name Tatra, the car was named for a mountain range in Eastern Europe. Look closely at the Tatra to see what makes it special. It is a large silver car with light brown seats inside. The curved front end has three headlights. The third headlight is a fog lamp called Cyclops after a one-eyed creature from Greek mythology. The three-part windshield made it easier for the driver to see. An extra tire was hidden under the rounded hood up front. This was very unusual at the time. It was also unique at the time for having its super 75 horsepower engine mounted in the back of the car, as you can see in this other picture. It had so many special features. The blinkers even flipped out from the sides when the driver signaled a turn. The cover over the rear wheels is called a skirt. When Hans Ludwinka designed the car quite a long time ago, it was also special for how fast it could go. Yet the Tatra is very rare. Only 2000 of this style Tatra were ever made. What do you think makes the Tatra car a highlight? If you would like, Take a moment to pause the video and draw your own very special car with as many fabulous features as you want. This highlight of Mia's collection is a sculpture of a powerful horse. Artists in China made it almost 2,000 years ago. Look closely at this special horse, which is made from bronze, a type of metal. The horse is about the size of a medium to large dog. The horse is mostly green, except where details that were once painted still show. 
The horse's mouth is wide open, showing its teeth. Its nostrils and eyes are also wide open. Its ears are straight up and a blue mane runs down its long, thick neck. Some red and blue paint on its neck show where the reins used to control the horse were once painted. On its back, traces of the saddle still show. The horse's curved tail is in the air. Its front legs are mostly straight, but its strong rear legs are bent as though ready for action. How do you think the horse is feeling? What do you see that makes you say that? This bronze sculpture shows an exceptional kind of horse known as Fergana because it came from the Fergana Valley in Central Asia. China's emperor sought out these powerful horses for his army. This artwork is called Celestial Horse because these amazing animals were almost believed to be from another world. This sculpture was cast into bronze from nine different molds because it was too difficult to make it in one large piece. Horses like this one were made for big tombs of wealthy people to provide them with transportation in their next life. What do you think makes this Chinese bronze horse a highlight? Take a moment, if you'd like, to pause and draw your own powerful animal. Include some details to show its special powers. You could make a list of the special powers you want it to have to help you get started. This highlight of Mia's collection is a stone mask made about 3,000 years ago. It comes from lands that are part of southern Mexico today. Historians who study the Olmec culture of ancient Mesoamerica think the mask was made as a portrait of an Olmec leader. Look closely at the stone mask. The surface of the stone is light green with darker speckles. The face appears to be mostly human with a broad forehead, narrow ears, and deep set eyes with holes cut into them. The nose leads to a mouth which is turned down. The special type of mouth is often seen in Olmec art. A curved row of teeth lie above the open mouth and lower lip. Thin red lines make designs all over the green mask. For example, an X outlined in red crosses over the mouth. There are small circles below each of the parts of the X. Although it is pretty hard to see, a supernatural human jaguar face hovers just above the right eye. Other lines appear around the eyes, cheeks, and chin. How do you think this Olmec ruler is feeling? What do you see that makes you say that? The mask was likely made for a ceremony of some kind. The Olmec artist sculpted it from jadeite, a very hard stone. Jadeite was very valuable because the Olmec made a symbolic connection between the green color of the stone and the idea of life. Think about the green color of plants. After carving the lines into the stone, the artist highlighted them with a red powder called cinnabar. These lines might show face paint or tattooing. The rare materials and symbolic designs like the human jaguar tell us about the ruler's religious and political power. What do you think makes this very ancient Olmec mask a highlight? If you would like, take a moment here to draw some pictures or symbols that you could include in an artwork to show that someone or something is special. What colors would you use? This highlight of Mia's collection is a modern painting by American artist Beaufort Delaney. 
This type of painting is called abstract because it is all about the paint, colors, and lines, and how they express feelings. Look closely at this painting. The surface of the painting is mostly covered by many different colors of paint. Swirling green lines appear to move on the surface. Patches of bright yellow show up all over. Other areas are dabbled with red and blue paint. In other areas, there is white paint and lots of colors made by mixing thick white paint with all the colors. The artist signed his name, the year he made the painting, and the place where he made it, Paris, in the lower right corner. Beaufort Delaney painted this artwork with all its swirls of line and color a few months after moving from New York City in the United States to Paris, France. He was living in a new place and started painting in a new way. When he lived in New York City, he painted pictures that showed the city and its people. As a Black American, Beaufort Delaney faced a lot of discrimination in the United States. Paris was a more tolerant place where he believed he would be treated with kindness and respect. His new sense of freedom might be one reason Delaney tried a new way of painting. He even experimented or tried different ways of putting paint on the canvas. Look closely for areas where you think he might have painted with a flat tool called a palette knife, his fingers, or even squeezed colors right out of the paint tubes. How do you think Beaufort Delaney felt when he made this painting? What do you see that makes you say that? Abstract art is often made to make viewers like you feel something too. How do you feel when you look at this painting? The winter when Delaney painted this was hard for him. Cold temperatures in Paris hit a record low and his studio was unheated. When a friend gave him a nice warm coat, he cut up his old coat so he could paint on it. If you turn over this painting, you can even see the outline of a pocket. What do you think makes Beaufort Delaney's abstract painting a highlight? Grab your pencil and paper or other supplies and make your own abstract artwork. What kind of feelings will you show? Thank you for looking at so many highlights of the collection of the Minneapolis Institute of Arts. If you had to pick one highlight from today's tour as your favorite, which one would you pick? Why? Which one would you pick as your second favorite? We hope you will be able to visit the museum in person soon. And if not, be sure to look for other highlights. There are a lot of them on Mia's website at www.artsmia.org. That's www.artsmia.org.